Okay guys, the first step is to create a template or pro forma. And I'll use a standard template for a WAC type of question. We'll start with the column market value. Then we'll move to cost of capital. Multiply one by the other. And we can then get a fourth column for our weighted average cost of capital. Now, I will use the rows then for each element in the capital structure. In this question, we have two, ordinary shares and loan notes. You guys, this is a standard template that I'll use on virtually any WAC type of question. Okay, now I'm going to show the marker that I'm working in dollars and that I'm working in millions. There's no marks for formatting, but I'm going to present a nice organized document so that I can follow along and the marker can follow along. Now, let's get to market values. Do we know the number of shares? Yes, we do. Do we know the market price for one share? We sure do. Multiply one by the other and we can get the market value of equity. Now, we know that there are $14 million of loan notes par value, and we know they are trading at 107.4 for $100. Okay, we can add those two numbers up now using the sum function, and there we go. Remember, there are no marks for formatting, but the document's getting a little cluttered looking, so let's clean things up so both the marker and I can follow along. Next step, everybody. Ordinary shares. Let's get the cost of capital, and we will use the capital asset pricing model here. So we have the risk-free plus the equity beta multiplied by the market return less the risk-free. Easy to do in Excel. Just watch your parentheses to make sure the order of operations is correct. Now, here's the cool part, everybody. For the loan notes, we need to do IRR. And we will now use the built-in function, the IRR function, that is in the ACCA spreadsheet tool. Okay, so we will use a working to show the marker, we've moved over here to a new place. We'll label our workings, we'll show the marker what we're doing. And for an IRR, first thing we'll need is the after-tax interest payment. So on a $100 block of bonds, we'll get $7 interest minus 1, multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. That gives us the tax shield, everybody. So. 5.6 is the after-tax interest payment. Now we need two columns. I'll need my year. I'll need my cash flow. Let me zoom out a bit so I can do this without scrolling. We have seven years to maturity, so I need zero plus seven years in one column. The year zero cash flow is the current market price for $100 of bond. Okay. Every year we have this annuity. We have a $5.6 interest payment net of tax going out of the company. And we can just copy that down the whole row. And in the final year, in year seven, what do we need? In year seven, we need the $100 plus the 5.6. So we've got a 105.6. We've got years. We've got cash flows. Now, ladies and gents, we can deploy the IRR function. Simply type equals IRR. Grab the range of cells, the negative cash flow and the positive cash flows. Close out your parentheses and you're done. It looks pretty cluttered, so we'll format that to the rent to the percentage format. Zoom out so we can see everything that we're doing. Using relative cell addressing, we can just set C4 equal to the IRR. A little more formatting, everybody. We have a nice organized script that the marker can follow. It's actually a spreadsheet, not a script. 
Okay, and we're almost done. Now we have to deal with column D. Multiply ordinary shares times cost of capital. Copy that formula down. Total that column using the sum function. And once again, a little more tactical formatting so we can follow along more easily so the marker can see what we're doing. And look at that. We are so close to being done. Okay, all we have to do is divide cell D5 by B5. And there we are. We have now completed our question. We have calculated the WAC. Ladies and gents, in the spreadsheet tool, I hope you see it's much easier, much faster, much cleaner. All right, good luck on your F9 exam, everybody.